Welcome to the Digital Edge with Sharon Nelson and Jim Calloway. Your hosts, both legal technologists, authors, and lecturers, invite industry professionals to discuss a new topic related to lawyers and technology. You're listening to Legal Talk Network. Welcome to the 136th edition of the Digital Edge Lawyers and Technology. We're glad to have you with us. I'm Sharon Nelson, President of Sensei Enterprises, an information technology, cybersecurity, and digital forensics firm in Fairfax, Virginia. And I'm Jim Calloway, Director of the Oklahoma Bar Association's Management Assistance Program. Today, our topic is Highlights of the Walters Kluwer's 2019 Future Lawyer Survey. Before we get started, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsor, Clio. Clio's cloud-based practice management software makes it easy to manage your law firm from intake to invoice. Try it for free at Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. Answer One is a leading virtual receptionist and answering services provider for lawyers. You can find out more by giving them a call at 800 answer the number one or online at answer the number one dot com. Thanks to Scorpion. Scorpion sets the standard for law firm online marketing with proven campaign strategies to get attorneys better cases from the internet. Partner with Scorpion to get an award-winning website and ROI positive marketing programs today. Visit scorpionlegal.com slash podcast. Thanks to ServeNow, a nationwide network of trusted pre-screened process servers. Work with the most professional process servers who have experience with high-volume serves, embrace technology, and understand the litigation process. Visit servenow.com to learn more. We are very pleased to have as our guest, Stacy Kaywood, who is the CEO of Walters Clear Legal and Regulatory, a leading provider of information, software, and integrated workflow solutions for legal and business compliance professionals worldwide. Our other guest is Dean Sonderegger, the Vice President and General Manager of Legal Markets and Innovation at Walters Clear's Legal and Regulatory U.S., He is responsible for the rapid development of advanced digital products and services to enhance customers' efficiency and workflow. Thanks for joining us today, Dean and Stacy. Thanks for having me, Jim and Sharon. Pleasure to be here with you today. Yes, thanks to you both. This is such an interesting and timely topic. It's uh, bound to be a great discussion. Well, we know that just about everybody who's listening knows who Walters Kluwer is, but not maybe as much as they might. So tell us a little bit more, if you would, Stacey. Yes, Sharon. So Walters Kluwer is focused on serving professionals around the world and helping them achieve better outcomes through expert solutions. In our legal division, we have a longstanding relationship with legal professionals in the U.S. and in Europe, having worked with them very closely over many decades. Can you tell us a little bit more about the survey, why you conducted it, and who participated in it? Sure, Jim. I think we can all agree that the legal industry is really at an inflection point. External forces are driving change, and it's no longer if, when, or how transformation is coming. It's really now. So Walters Kluwer wanted to explore what that will mean for the legal sector, how ready are legal professionals for what's coming, and what they can do to be best prepared. And so we commissioned an independent survey conducted by a global research firm to examine this. So the Future Ready Lawyers Survey included law professionals in law firms, in corporate legal departments, and in business services firms across the U.S. and in 10 countries in Europe. The survey asked lawyers to assess their current state and future priorities and preparedness to identify what it will take to be future ready in the areas of tools and technology, client needs and expectations, and organization and talent. And then just for context, the outlook for what we were calling the future relates to future-related questions is three years out. So, you know, thinking about uh, 2022. Gotcha. Well, you know, as the chair currently of the Future of Law Practice Committee uh, for the Virginia State Bar, I know what everybody really wants to know the most is what were the biggest takeaways from the survey? And maybe you could start, Stacy, and then Dean can chime in. Great, Sharon. So at the highest level, the survey found that the future of law is truly global, with many similar findings across 
the U.S. and Europe, even across different types of organizations. And I think that's a new element and a sign of the times with a more global economy. Uh, while some differences uh, were found based on specific geographic or organizational type, the most significant differences overall were between what we found to be the technology leaders and those transitioning and trailing organizations who are still not leveraging technology fully or really at all. So the Future Ready Lawyers survey found that while most organizations today rely on at least basic foundational technologies such as data security or encryption, those that are already leveraging technology to a greater extent, the so-called technology leaders, have an early adopter advantage over other organizations. We found that those uh, technology leaders outperform the others across all categories, including tools and technology, client needs and expectations, and organization and talent. And interestingly, they also report higher profitability. In fact, 68% of the technology-leading law and business services firms report increased profitability from 2017 to 2018, compared to only 52% of transitioning law firms. The interesting thing is that difference in profitability that we saw tracks with other sources that we've seen in the market. So if you look at um, the latest peer monitor report from Thompson, you'll see that on average, law firm revenue in the the last year has grown by about 5.5%, which is a great number. But there's still a lot of firms that are seeing decreases in revenue. And so when you look at the top 100, the MLA 100, you see about a quarter of the firms are contracting. Um, and if you go down to the second 100, that number jumps up to about 40%, and that carries down further down market. And so what we also asked in the survey is to say whether or not these firms were planning on increasing their technology investment over the next three years. And in fact, what we saw is that 65% of the firms that were uh, labeled themselves as technology leaders are, in fact, planning to increase their technology investment over the next three years compared to 45% of the transitioning firms or firms that are planning to increase technology but aren't using it to its full extent at this point in time. And that's an interesting thing. That implies that that distance or the gap between the haves and have-nots in the market is going to potentially get wider as opposed to narrow over time. Well, that's very interesting. I certainly see that even in the solo and small firm market, the technology adopters are getting to realize on their investment. Was there anything in the survey that actually surprised you? Yes, uh, there definitely was. For me, one of the biggest surprises was the gap between the high-impact legal market trends and organizations' readiness to address them. So about 70% of lawyers said that the top trends they believe uh, that will impact them is you know, first, coping with increased volume and complexity of information. Second, emphasis on improved efficiency and productivity. Third, understanding which legal technologies will deliver the highest value. The fourth, meeting client changing needs and the expectations they have. Um, And then finally, financial issues such as greater price competition, alternative fee structures, and cost containment pressures. But what's interesting is that only about 30% of the organizations surveyed overall say they're well prepared to handle any of these. So we see that there's a gap between the 70% who say these trends will have an impact and yet 30% feeling that they're really ready to address them. So I think the focus really needs to be what is it going to take to get to future ready? And optimizing technology, is, as you, you know, mentioned, Jim, is really going to be key to their success. So the Walters Kluwer survey found that the technology leaders reported much higher rate of readiness, with 50% of them feeling more prepared to manage the ongoing changes that are taking place in the legal marketplace. Very interesting. Before we move on to our next segment, let's take a quick commercial break. Imagine what you could do with an extra eight hours per week. That's how much time legal professionals save with Clio, the world's leading practice management software. With intuitive time tracking, billing, and matter management, Clio streamlines everything you do to run your practice from intake to invoice. Try Clio for free and get a 10% discount for your first six months when you sign up with the code TDE10. Of course, you can find Clio at Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. 
Feel like your marketing efforts aren't getting you the high value cases your firm deserves? For over 15 years, Scorpion has helped thousands of law firms just like yours attract new cases and grow their practices. As a Google Premier Partner and winner of Google's Platform Innovator Award, Scorpion has the right resources and technology to market your law firm aggressively and generate better cases from the internet. For more information, visit scorpionlegal.com forward slash podcast. Welcome back to the Digital Edge on the Legal Talk Network. Today, our subject is highlights of Walter Kluwer's 2019 Future Lawyer Survey. And our guests are Stacy Kaywood, the CEO of Walter's Kluwer Legal and Regulatory, and Dean Sonder Egger, the VP and General Manager of Legal Markets and Innovation at Walter Kluwer's Legal and Regulatory U.S., Boy, that's a lot to read. You guys are impressive. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask Dean a question. So these leading organizations that you guys were talking about, what do they have that the others don't? Why are the others having so much trouble? Yeah, I think when it comes to the approach to technology, there is a focus that's, that's key here. And so when we, if you go back into technologists and you talk to them, they have this concept of something called a use case, which is roughly defined as what are you trying to accomplish in any given task? And organizations that are effective in using technology do an excellent job of purchasing technology to solve very specific problems or what I would call narrow use cases. And, and we'll define those as, as practical problems, things where success is clearly defined. An example of that might be, say, hey, I want to use some technology to uh, find comparable or standard language so that when I'm drafting contracts, it's a much faster process for me. So we, we find uh, these leading organizations are very good at narrowing down and, I guess, buying things that are very specific to the problems. The broader use cases, and I would call these the so-called robot lawyer use cases, tend to be uh, more costly and difficult to implement. They might lack a specific application that, that ties to things that the attorneys care about, you know, revenue and profit. And organizations that try and purchase technology uh, for technology's sake in the absence of a solid use case, they tend to struggle. And it's not uncommon we see the investments being abandoned after a period of time. What will the transitioning and trailing organizations need to do to catch up with those leading organizations? Yes, Jim, uh, good question. And as uh, we noted earlier, the survey found that those technology leaders outperform the other organizations across the board. So for those organizations that are not confident that they're well-positioned, I would advise them to do a few things. And I'd say to start with the future. So first, what's your vision and the strategy for your organization? Do you know where you want to be next year and three years or beyond? And make sure it's clearly defined and communicated to everyone in the organization. And then next, those organizations need to take a good look inside to assess where they are today in terms of the overall performance and capabilities, everything from technology to talent to business processes and services, and also consider the external forces that are driving change in the legal sector. Things like the need to be more productive and efficient, changing client expectations, and increasingly uh, complex and high volume of information that these organizations are dealing with. And then the organization should have a good foundation upon which to build a solid plan that fills the gaps and strengthens the capabilities on an ongoing basis. And let's not leave out the tech leaders. I'd say that even for the technology leaders, the secret to success is continuing to evolve. So there's a saying from uh, Will Rogers, the American humorist, who once said, even if you're on the right track, You'll get run over if you just sit there. So that's true even for the you know, tech leaders. Complacency really poses a risk, so they need to continue to drive success uh, and change for all those organizations as well. And, and I think the thing I would add to that is that, and this was in the survey results, is that the leading organizations continue to invest more in technology than the trailing or transitioning organizations. And so I think, obviously, the planning is, is critical, but in order to catch up with the organiz leading organizations, these organizations need to commit to higher investment levels. And then, of course, take a hard look at the things that are preventing them from following suit with the technology leaders. 
Well, Dean, how do you persuade the C-suite? That's where people seem to always get stuck is when they, they're, they're trying to get the C-suite to sign off on stuff and they just won't. Yeah, I think that, Sharon, I think that the, um, you know, the, to me, the case for innovation or investment always maps back to business fundamentals. It's either revenue or profitability that needs to be addressed. And I think that, you know, it's interesting. You look at it, on average right now, attorneys bill about 13 hours per month less than they did a decade ago. So we can do the math, and it translates into 156 hours per year, which uh, so let's just take a number of $415 an hour. It's about $74,000 a year per attorney. And you know, that drop in attorney productivity is driven by a bunch of factors, but one of the largest that we see is that there's write-downs from clients unwilling to pay for certain tasks. And my advice to attorneys looking to start these types of projects and then to sell into the C-suite is to look specifically at write-downs. And again, we're talking about law firms as opposed to corporate legal departments, but look at the write-downs and identify technology that can be used to reduce the time required to perform that work. And, and I'll give you an example. I think when we look at uh, M&A activity uh, and you go through due diligence, and you go through contract review uh, on that, uh, clients right now are by and large unwilling to pay full rates for this work. There's um, document review tools, AI or machine learning document review tools around that greatly reduce the effort to find things. And like my classic example I give is uh, contracts that are not assignable, right? And so when you use those tools, the, the law firm spends less attorney time on what's a partially billable activity, or they're freed up from the expense of hiring contract lawyers to come in on the engagement. And when you find tasks like that, and match them up with the right technology, it makes the development of the business case much, much easier. That was a really uh, very good and practical answer. I might have stolen a little thunder from you here, Stacy, with, with my asking that question. But <laughs> other than the C-suite, what do you see as the biggest roadblocks? No, absolutely. I think it all ties to, <laughs> together. So, you know, really interesting, right? So one of the things that the Future Ready Lawyer Survey found is that while technology is an enabler, a better performance overall the top reasons organizations, so I think this is sort of getting to your question a bit, Sharon, one of the top reasons organizations resist technology is that for 36% of the respondents, they simply lack the technology understanding, the knowledge, the skills uh, that they need to know in order to invest properly, right? So um, I definitely think that these organizations should look at, you know, is there a gap? Uh, Do you have the right talent to help move forward, not just great lawyers, but perhaps somebody to actually drive technology adoption. And then other reasons for resistance to technology, and this is from about 34% of the respondents said that there were organizational issues, including things such as resistance to change, you know, lack of technology vision from leadership. And then, you know, again, back to your point, another you know, key reason for roadblocks around implementing technology was 30% are saying that they are related to financial issues. So, you know, direct costs, you know, not understanding if there's a uh, return on investment. But what's really interesting to me is that, you know, we also see that the organizations that are already optimizing technology also report they're investing more in the future. So, you know, I would say to those, you know, leaders of these organizations, you know, maybe reach out to peers and understand, you know, we know it at a high level that there is a positive ROI. Otherwise, these firms wouldn't be continuing to invest more, right? So there are good mm-hmm. business cases. And with some of the examples that Dean just provided, and, you know, how do they learn and how do they, you know, make sure that they are investing in the future for a positive ROI? Based on your observations, Dean, what is the most compelling case that can be made for convincing lawyers to advocate for innovation within their own organizations? Thanks, Jim. I I think it comes back to the finding that we talked about previously, which is just simply that the firms that are investing in the technology are are seeing greater increases in profits than the ones that are not. And I think that that's a pretty compelling case, is if you're able to drive more profits per partner, at the end of the day, that's the name of the game. Before we move on to our next segment, let's take a quick commercial break. Is your firm experiencing missed calls, empty voicemail boxes, and potential clients you'll never hear from again? Enter Answer One Virtual Receptionists. They're more than just an answering service. Answer One is available 24 7. They can even schedule appointments, respond to emails, integrate with Clio, and much more. 
Answer One helps make sure your clients have the experience they deserve. Give them a call at 1 800 Answer One or visit them at answerone.com forward slash podcast for a special offer. Looking for a process server you can trust? ServeNow.com is a nationwide network of local pre screen process servers. ServeNow works with the most professional process servers in the country. Connect your firm with process servers who embrace technology, have experience with high volume serves, and understand the litigation process and rules of properly effectuating service. Find a pre screen process server today. Visit servenow.com. Welcome back to the Digital Edge on the Legal Talk Network. Today, our subject is highlights of Walter Kluwer's 2019 Future Lawyer Survey, and our guests are Stacey Kaywood, the CEO of Walter's Kluwer Legal and Regulatory, and Dean Sondernager, the VP and General Manager of Legal Markets and Innovation at Walter's Kluwer's Legal and Regulatory U.S. We've learned a whole lot, Dean, today about what legal professionals can learn from the survey. Is there anything you'd like to add to it? It, it just seems to me it's a very it's a very educational study to take a look at. Yeah, it, it was really quite informative for us. I think one of the things that was interesting, and we focused a lot on law firms, part of the survey focused on corporate legal departments also, and a question was asked of them was to say, what are the most important factors in evaluating law firms for use as outside counsel? And it's, it's interesting, even with all the emphasis on legal technology we've had here, the top three factors used, and this was in true in Europe and in the U.S., were price, ability to understand client needs and partner with clients, and specialization. And they, the order of them differed between U.S. and Europe, but they both were the top three. And use of technology was way down on the list. And, and this, to me, continues to confirm that technology remains to be a means to an end and not an end unto itself. So we see successful firms investing to help manage their costs, to uh, provide better insight to client needs, and to provide the ability to specialize more. And that's all to the end of better service to the clients, but not for the technology's sake itself. So I thought that was an interesting thing that the corporate legal departments had not shifted over the emphasis on technology over those other items. If you conducted a survey like this three years from now, what do you think the biggest differences would be? Yeah, I think one of the biggest differences will be technology being more integrated into firm processes and client services. In fact, in the survey, about eight in 10 lawyers said that technology will play a greater role in how they deliver service by 2022. So we'll continue to see technology becoming more and more integral to legal services overall. And I think this will be driven by client demands and also by the demographics of the workforce. In terms of the next wave of new technologies, such as artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, robotic process automation, the millennials we surveyed said these transformational technologies will have important application and strong impact in the legal sector. As Stacey also mentioned earlier, one of the biggest challenges with adoption of these technologies is simply an understanding of the technologies themselves. And that's not really surprising given that a bunch of these technologies, particularly analytics and all the forms of AI that we see, are relatively new from a product perspective. My sense is in three years, you'll see the products and product categories themselves mature significantly, which will make understanding and navigating the choices a lot easier. And I would use e-discovery as an example. Nobody really questions whether or not e-discovery is a viable technology now. And I think the same will be true for many of the enabling and transformational technologies three years from now. I think you're probably right, and your projection and your crystal ball look pretty good to me. I want to thank both of you, uh, Dean and Stacy, for being our guests today. This was a really valuable survey. I think it's particularly relevant that technology is not really the focal point, and yet technology is the underpinning of so much of what is happening out there and making things better for law firms. But we really enjoyed your report on this survey. We thank you for bringing it to our guests. I know they enjoyed listening to all of your remarks. So thank you both for being with us. Well, thank you, Jim and Sharon, for having us. We really enjoyed the conversation. And I think that we're at an extremely exciting point in the evolution and really the adoption of legal technology. Agree. Thanks so much, Sharon and Jim. It was really a pleasure to speak with you about the new findings of the Future Ready Lawyer Survey. 
That does it for this edition of the Digital Edge Lawyers and Technology. And remember, you can subscribe to all of the editions of this podcast at LegalTalkNetwork.com or on Apple Podcasts. And if you enjoyed our podcast, please rate us in Apple Podcasts. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye, Miss Sharon. Happy trails, cowboy. Thanks for listening to the Digital Edge. Produced by the broadcast professionals at Legal Talk Network. Join Sharon Nelson and Jim Calloway for their next podcast covering the latest topic related to lawyers and technology. Subscribe to the RSS feed on LegalTalkNetwork.com or in iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.